Simpsons Rule. You've seen Simpsons Rule before. What's Simpsons Rule for? What kind of things does Simpsons Rule do? Approximations. Strange. It, it works out approximations of what? Area. Strange shapes. Awkward areas um, that don't fit like area triangle, area trapezium, etc. Maybe just on the side, just to jog your memory, draw yourself one of these. Something like, ooh, like that. So here's a classic example of something you might see. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. It's not well drawn. Like so. Okay. So here is awkward area, and you've got all of these measurements on here that might be provided to you. I'm not interested in the numbers, but you might know this length, this length, this length, this length, and this length. What's the other piece of information you would need to know to use Simpson's rule, apart from these guys here? What else would you need? Yeah, very good. This uh, common distance here, they've all got to be the same. Do you remember that? Um, we have a letter that we usually apply to that. We usually call it H which is, um, it stands for height, even though it's looking sideways, but a shape can be oriented whichever way you like. Right? Now, I wonder if you remember, again, you don't have to, but it's helpful to, do you remember the formula for Simpson's rule? Nick, go for it. H over three. H over three times? Times the first part, and then plus 4 times the second part. I'm going to call it middle. Yep. Okay. That's the last one. Or the end. Okay. Now this is the Simpsons rule that you find on the formula data sheet. You can see, like you told me, there's this length here. Then you've got one, two, three values. Hold on a second though. This particular example I just did, I didn't give you three, one, two, three. I gave you five. So what would you do with this particular one? You've seen this before. You would, do, and that's the actual phrase that they use. Use two applications of Simpsons rule to approximate this area. So you would do this once for this shape over here. There you go. See, one, two, three values. And then you would do it a second time for this shape over here. Which means that if you have a look in the middle, this purpley bit here, you use this value, you use it twice, right? For the blue area, it's the last, and for the red area, it's the first. So you've seen this before, okay? However, one of the great things about Simpson's rule is that you can actually use it for lots more than just area. Let's connect some extra dots here. If you picture what you're looking at here as sort of like a, uh, a cross section of like a riverbed, okay? So what you've got is a riverbed that changes in width and in depth at different places, like a normal riverbed does, okay? Now, if what you've got here is lengths that are consistent, just like you had over here. If instead of knowing what these lengths are, you had these cross-sectional areas, you can use Simpson's rule in exactly the same way. So again, just like we had before, I'm just gonna make up some numbers. If these are areas here, if it's a riverbed, I guess we're looking at sort of square meters. That'd be a reasonable unit. Square centimeters would be too small, square kilometers would be too big. So I'm gonna call this one, say, 100 square meters. If that's 100 square meters, what would you estimate this is? Just give me a rough ballpark. How many of these would fit in there? Thir how many? 13? 8? I, I reckon, I think 10's pretty close. Let's make it out. I mean, because I'm just. 10 of these areas can fit into there. No, like 5 or 6. 5, 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. Don't forget, this has like some narrow bits as well. Yeah, this thing fitting into this middle area, it's a cross section. It's not yeah. consistent though, it's not a prison though, is it? Well, I'm just going to make a number. Let's call it, you all disagree, so I'm going to call it that. That's somewhere in between what everyone's saying. Okay? Uh, and then you've got one last area on the end. Let's just call that 180. So even though what we're calculating now is not an area, you can still use Simpson's rule in much the same way. You've got the consistent height. You've got these, they call them function values, now they're no longer lengths. And I can use this formula just like I did before. Oh, we need one more thing. This distance over here. Mm. Let's call this, let's call it 80. Now remember, they have to be the same. It's got to be consistent all the way through. So now I can say an approximation of the volume. Volume is approximately equals equal. Two. And I'm going to use Simpson's rule just like I did before. So here's my H. 
these are my H's. How do you know whether these are the H's or these are the H's? Because the formula sheet tells you you've got an H, but how do you identify which one's which? Because they're the same. It's the same, it's consistent. And you can sort of see that. You see how it only appears once? So you don't need to do it over and over again. If these were the um, H's, then you'd put in the same number repeatedly. That's no point. So I'm going to say 80 on 3. And then I've got these values that come in the middle. So this is going to be 100 square meters. Four lots of this middle one, and this last one. Now, just as you're finishing writing that out and maybe getting your calculator out to start evaluating that, I just want to make a point which came home in the last exam you just did. In the AP3s, you had a heck of a lot of conversions to do, right? This just happens all the time. You get given units, then you calculate something, you're like, nah, these units are no longer any good. My number is enormous, or my number is tiny. I'd better convert. Or sometimes you ask for a cost or a time. So conversions just happen. For that reason, more and more, I'm going to encourage you to write units every single time. I know from early on, you might have gotten into the habit of just writing the numbers and adding the units at the very end. In most cases, that'll get you fine. But a lot of you got really confused because you changed units along the way, but you didn't say what you were doing. So I'm going to write it every line from now on. Has someone got a number for me? 9226. 9226. Yep. Yeah, oh, sorry, 9226. 66. Six. Are there decimal places? Or yeah, is that it? 0.67, if you want to round it off. Cool. Yeah. Approximately equal to. What units am I using here? 66. Meters to. Very good. So you notice we transitioned from here's a length. Oh, that was naughty. I forgot the units there. Here's a length times an area. That gives you a volume, right? 